Today's episode is sponsored by Future State Media, experts in off Amazon traffic for Amazon sellers. Future State Media will build you a custom made website to deliver sales for you on Amazon. Built to grab traffic from search engines and social media, your site can be used as a secret weapon for launching products on Amazon or just to stabilize your Amazon sales. It means you can also build an email list on autopilot. Go to futurestatemedia.com for your free guide to Google SEO for Amazon sellers today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is your host, Michael VZ. Welcome to Amazing FBA. Today, we are talking to Nathan Fox, who's the head of Working Capital UK from Payoneer, which is, the, as they call themselves, the market-leading payment solution for e-commerce sellers. So obviously, cash flow and cash flow management is a critical thing. Um, right now more than ever, um, even more than when we planned this interview. So Nathan, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Hi, Michael. Hi. Thanks for having me and thanks for everyone that's um, listening to this podcast. So first of all, Working Capital, um, we're going to talk about that. But before we get into that, um, can you give me a quick overview of your understanding of the e-commerce situation from what your clients are up to? Is everyone suffering? Are some people doing okay? What's the sort of general feedback? Um, great question. I mean, Payoneer, we you know cover the whole complete range and spectrum of uh, e-commerce seller um, in all different regions and 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 locations. Um, from our side, from a UK and a, an EU perspective, um, we've seen a, a lot of sellers in certain categories um, actually do quite well. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of people at home now. A lot of people doing more online shopping. Um, so from a a standpoint of essentials or, or, or things that people need on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, groceries, supplies, health stuff, baby products, uh, sellers that have done, you know, selling in those categories have, have done quite well. Um, on the contrary though, we've also seen, you know, sellers that, that are dealing in maybe electronics or other goods that have a, you know, quite heavy reliance on, you know, manufacturing outside of the UK. Um, you know, they've maybe seen a downturn in sales, probably from the start of January as they've, uh, you know, run out of maybe run out of stock and unable to find a, you know, cheaper or similar level, you know, replacements. Yeah, it does make sense. And that's the story that I'm getting back from uh, the moments in the 10K Collective uh, Mastermind who are in a variety of Amazon sellers mostly, um, but also from people I've spoken to, uh, somebody who deals in e-commerce based over in um, states in Florida, okay. in Tampa, Florida, and, and uh, also logistics guys based over in Miami that I've been speaking to this week. So it seems quite common across the board. Some people are doing better than ever and a lot are doing worse. But mostly based around the uh, logistics, it seems like the, the main limitation so let's get into working capital obviously a lot of people how are being challenged right now with um, their cash flow so it's an important topic I think to always to address but particularly now um, first of all let's define what what does working capital mean for you um, so if I guess for Payoneer we we see working capital as uh, probably one of the you know most single important kind of pillars for an e-commerce seller um, I mean, what, how we define it is basically the cash that um, a business would have available to spend uh, in a moment's time. So I guess it could be in the form of cash, but it could also be in the form of, you know, assets that are, can be quickly liquidated. So, you know, either inventory or, you know, stuff like their accounts receivable. So anything that can, you know, produce itself as cash in, you know, quite quite instantaneously is what we see as a business working capital um so it's you know definitely tied into their cash flow so if a business has positive cash flow regular revenues coming in that generally means that they'll have you know a good working capital balance that they can work with so what's the purpose of your getting involved with uh, working capital um what is the problem you're aiming to solve in other words Oh, so um, for those who know Payoneer, I guess for those who don't, um, as Michael said, we kind of see ourselves as the market leading payment platform for e-commerce sellers, as well as other verticals like freelancers and such. Um, but specifically with e-commerce, um, we prov initially provided them with you know local bank accounts to receive and make payments from marketplaces and other B2B activities. Um, and getting a good ground in the market, we realized how important working capital is for sellers. Um, in terms of managing cash flow and, and helping them with their with their global growth, um, so what we see working capital usage for um, initially it was for just you know buying inventory was our kind of main primary objective, helping sellers get additional cash to buy inventory 
and you know make more revenue and then more profit um, but we've also seen that businesses actually use it for paying regular overheads like you know utility bills um, you know sometimes they get hit with infrequent you know bills such as taxes that they might not want to pay with their you know with their reserve funds all in one go they might want to spread it uh, over a few months um, and you know even if it isn't a kind of visionary visionary um, goal they might just get hit with a sudden emergency bill a sudden emergency breakdown machinery factory what, what have you and they might just need cash instantly that they don't have to to sort out the problem so a, a range of um, you know, a variety of situations where working capital can come into place. Okay. So um, in the first case then, why are people not just going to get hold of their bank? Would that not be the obvious thing to do that, if you have a working would, capital requirement? Yeah. That would be the obvious thing to do. And it's probably everyone's, I guess, first option to kind of go to your bank. But I guess the banks have changed a lot, probably even more since the financial crisis. They're not as open, not as friendly as they, as they once used to be. I mean, if you talk to an e-commerce seller and ask him, you know, what's the relationship like with his bank manager, it's probably, you know, non-existent. Um, whereas, you know, new fintechs like ourselves and companies that are a bit more customer facing, they actually have a, a more of a personal relationship. Um, which actually builds a bit more trust and that they know we're a bit more flexible and that we have the power to, you know, give them cash at, you know, if it's a more favorable rate or more favorable repayment terms. So there's just that, that degree of flexibility and that, that openness that we have with, with the market, whereas banks are more, you know, bricks and mortar are quite, quite rigid um, and quite actually hard, difficult to actually get hold of. Um, yeah, they can be. That's certainly been my uh, experience with uh, with the banking sector as a whole, and and uh, sort of via the mastermind members, um, a few people have managed to get loans out of their banks. It takes a lot of uh, normally personal yeah. guarantees, famously, which people have been talking about today, haven't they, in, in relationship to the business trying to build um, the sort of latest bailout from the government. Yeah, the bailout the bill. Yeah. In order to then have the banks help businesses, it turns out. That as far as I can tell from what little I've read around it, it's business as usual. In other words, you want a big loan, you have a personal guarantee yeah. pointing at your head, right? Is that still your experience now? Yeah, definitely our experience. And, you know, I mean, I guess a personal guarantee isn't too much of a big deal if it's a, you know, not a large sum of money. If it's, you know, five, five K, maybe 10 K, it might, it might be, you know, you might be willing to sign that personal guarantee. But, you know, if it's something, north of 50,000, 100,000 pounds, you might not be, you know, so, you know, forthcoming to want to sign that personal guarantee for such a, such a large sum. Cause you know, if, if God forbid something did happen and it, it made it difficult to repay the loan, then, you know, you'd be personable, personally liable to, to repay that. And that, you know, that could involve your house, your assets and, and, and the rest. So that, that makes it very, 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 uh, you know, unfavorable to to sign the personal guarantee absolutely well so i presume from what you're saying that um let, let's clarify then a little bit about what you guys offer as an example I, you know i'm not i'm not here to do a sort of heavy pitch for pioneer but i, I think it is um a part of the picture that i think people need to be aware of which is why i thought i'd get, get you guys on because um sometimes you do need work on capital increases. So is this a loan that you guys offer? Um, and is it the same kind of thing that a bank would offer? Or have you got a slightly different sort of way that you, you deal mean, with it's, this? Well, it's slightly different from your quote unquote typical uh, bank loan. Um, ours is a capital advance. And what it basically means is we're, we're purchasing your upcoming marketplace earnings, your marketplace receivables. So how we do that is we base it off your average monthly sales over over a certain time period normally about six months um due to being in the market for so long we kind of know and see the seasonal trends that happen with you know your your everyday average amazon seller um and we also have an api with amazon where we can specifically see um data from your uh, a seller's amazon store so what makes us different from a loan is a as we've already talked about, there's no personal guarantees or, or credit checks on the business. So it's quite, you know, low on the risk end of things in, in that regard. And B, we don't actually charge any interest or any APR, which is sometimes a bit kind of tricky to get around, around sellers' heads. But what we actually do is just provide a one-time fixed fee 
and add that to the cost of the amount that you that you borrow from us so for instance if you took ten thousand pounds at the moment we're doing a, a flat fixed fee of, of 2.5 percent so all that means is it will cost you 250 pounds on top of that so effectively when it's all done and settled you have paid back 10,250 pounds so it's a fairly straightforward um, thing then. So it, does it make a difference how quickly somebody pays that back? I mean, are, are we talking about a, tick, a six month loan or how quickly would you expect to get that money back? Yeah. So at, at the moment, I mean, we've only really been doing working capital for the last nine, 10 months. Um, so we took a really, really simple approach. Whenever you borrow money from Payoneer going forward after a short grace period, we would then take 35% of your future Amazon earnings until it was settled off. Um, now, typically this takes between three to five months for the average working capital facility that we've given out. So, I mean, there's no strict time frame on it. So it's not a guaranteed three months or a guaranteed five months. It's more down due to your sales. So if your sales spike, then you might pay it on the, you know, the quicker end of things. If your sales slow down, then you might pay it off on the slower end of things. But all in all, the fee doesn't change. So you're basically um, punting the, pushing the payments down the road by um, uh, a couple of months by the sound of it. So if I earned uh, $50,000 this month and then next month, I would be paying you guys back, uh, whatever that is, um, uh, six, uh, no, it wouldn't be six, $12,000 or something like that. And then you'd be, you know, and the rest will be going back into my pocket and so forth until I paid it down. Is that about right? Yeah, that's correct. So no, it's 15,000. Sorry, my bad maths. Yeah, so if, you took, <laughs> if you took 50K, you'd be paying and you earn that consistently every month. Then by the end of each month, you would have paid, you know, around between 15 and 17 and a half thousand pounds back. Um, and of course, if you do that over the course of three months, then then that would be the end of the cycle and you would have paid back the 50,000 plus the 1,250 pound fee on top at the end. Okay. So what about if um, in a situation like a lot of people be in right now, let's say somebody I'd taken out a paying a loan last month uh, or paying a working capital product, if you prefer to put it that way, but it's a loan of some description, uh, I guess. <laughs> and that let's say then my sales have dropped off a cliff. I presume that I am still only paying back to you about 30% of those sales over the next sort of, it's going to just take me longer to pay it back. Is that right? Yeah, it would take you longer to pay back. Um, we have got to that position where sometimes sellers, you know, their sales have dropped, you know, unprecedentedly or unexpectedly. Um, in that case, I mean, after it gets past a certain period, normally around, you know, nine months, then we would try to work out other alternative repayment plans. So if they did have sales elsewhere, maybe from a website or anywhere else, then we would come to an individual agreement um, but the official agreement is we will keep collecting from your Amazon stores until um, the advance is paid off. So, um, so one of the things that obviously you do, one of the reasons you can make these loans is because you're close to integration with Amazon, your understanding of Amazon. Um, and I understand you have API access and, and you want to, and you look at six months worth of data. Is that right? Yeah, so we have a, an API of Amazon, um, which is accessed through the seller's MWS token. Mm -hmm. um, and that just lets us see a range of Amazon performance data. Um, every Amazon seller will know about it. So, you know, they're all the defect rate, the late shipment rate, um, mm -hmm. pre-fulfillment cancel rate. I think those are the, the three main ones that we look at. Um, and as long as those are within the parameters that Amazon specifies as being a, a good seller um, or a healthy store, then um, we will be able to provide an offer um, and as long as they've been on on the marketplace for at least 12 months um, because that shows you you're at least a committed Amazon seller um, and that's how we mitigate um, our risk on who we who we are led to okay so presumably right now there's a lot of people whose historic data looks pretty solid but whose sales are now fallen off a cliff um, but they might be in more need of you know, loans than anybody else. Is that somebody you'd be able to help now or, or would you sort of have to draw a line somewhere? I mean, obviously we would draw a line at some point. I mean, at the moment now, sellers are, some sellers are going through a transition period because I guess they might have stock in place now, but they might not, I guess, have the means to get more stock for the future. 
Um, so, I mean, if we were to give an offer, it might not match their 100% volume, which is what we actually do at the moment, but we might give 50% or 75% of their, you know, their average. So we do have a machine learning tool as well as, uh, you know, human underwriters that would look at each specific case and then come up with a number that, that made sense for that, that business specifically. Um, but we will try to give as much as we can to help, to help a seller. Um, but as long as you know it makes sense and and the risk isn't too high yeah that makes sense and and i guess in the end you don't want to be lending money to somebody who really cannot afford to pay it back because it wouldn't help them any more than it would help you so it's no that, definitely not that balance to be sure i mean they do say that you know that that you, you you ought to borrow money from the bank when you don't need it because when you need it you don't get a loan but on the other hand there is some common sense in that yeah. i have to say I, I wouldn't want to stack up loans right now that i could not afford to pay back for sure so um Okay, so the purposes of, of this, you've already mentioned that people use to um, maybe help with some cash flow spikes that they hadn't seen coming, like uh, tax problems or emergencies with the manufacturing, whatever. What are the other ways that people are, do you find been, have been using this facility? Um, I guess um, another main one that I may have missed out is actually advertising. <laughs> As Amazon sellers, we all know how important it is to to advertise on Amazon to get in the first page or so of of each you know search, um, as well as using Facebook and Instagram and Google. Um, so advertising is you need to get in people's faces for them to kind of find your products, don't you? So um, that again is another key key uh, area where sellers will use working capital for because they might have cash that they use again for their day-to-day running of the business, but they may need extra to kind of promote themselves a bit more and get themselves out there a bit more. So that makes sense. Um, So tell me a little bit more of the sort of, again, so zooming back out, uh, thanks for talking me through the specifics of that. What is your experience of the, um, cash flow challenges of uh, e-commerce sellers as a whole because you've got quite a bigish client base there yeah um we talked in the beginning about you know the overall situation some people um are doing really well in certain categories like essentials health things baby products i know that i've got some uh, clients in the pet space again seems to be doing yeah. remarkably well um, i spoke with someone yesterday actually who was who's actually doing quite well in yeah and it seems to be per- perceived by amazon as an essential which is interesting i mean i suppose it shows that <laughs> i'm not saying it shouldn't be but it's interesting how, how amazon seems to have decided to prioritize um food you know um dog products or, or whatever yeah, pet a products. dog is a man's best friend as they say, well it, so. yeah there seems to be <laughs> I, I have no criticism of that but so that's the sort of overall business um picture what's the specific sort of cash flow picture are you seeing people getting challenged right now with their cash flow and their loan repayments and that stuff um from our side we haven't had many many defaults we haven't had many people say hey oh, i can't pay this back um I guess obviously in the current climate due to this pandemic, we're still kind of maybe in the quiet of the storm of, of it a little bit. So we kind of probably won't see the full impact of it until maybe everything's died down a bit or everything's calmed down a bit, should I say? Um so yeah, I think um we haven't seen too many defaults or people with cash flow issues at the moment. I think people are more projecting and, and fore planning about how they might survive when we've come out of this. So they're more thinking about the future and what cash flow they'll have available to them um, after this pandemic is, um, is over. Oh, interesting. So people are taking quite a long-term positive view by the sound of it. Um, so what is your view then in terms of um, where we're going to be in a few months time I and mean, this is it's a really horrible question because nobody can see the future so i acknowledge that it's a kind of dumb question but it's also the question that i guess everyone's asking themselves so i'm gonna <laughs> come come up with whatever version you can bear to live with but give, give me your take on where you think things are going in a few months time particularly based on what you just said um i guess to be honest i think things will definitely change um but i think at the end of the day the strong will survive and, and businesses that have, you know, got contingencies and, and prepared for the unexpected, although it's very difficult to, they're probably the ones that will come out of the best. And, and some actually will just come out on top as a form of luck, as you see in that there's been a spike in a few categories. I think even Amazon has kind of disabled FBA apart from a few specific categories which have made sellers have to kind of turn to alternative logistics providers um i know some of our partners are logistic providers and we've kind of 
been trying to help link customers with with suppliers to kind of help help that supply chain um but i mean i i just think things will change but you know if you're adaptable if you you know if you're optimistic then you probably will come out come out all right it might mean your business model might have to change i mean we've seen the likes of deliveroo and uber eats still survive and introduce you know contact free deliveries where you know, no one touches the food and, and it's left at your doorstep so as long as you're you're prepared for change um because things will change um I think you'll be all right. Obviously, I, I think there'll also be a, a less of a reliance on the Far East to manufacture goods. People might start to look more locally to source, as we've seen, you know, as borders close, it can prevent, pre present, sorry, a, um, a very challenging way of, of getting your goods. So we might see a uh, move to a more local manufacturing supply chain. Who knows? But I think at the end of the day, business will be as usual and this, this thing probably will disappear as, as quick as it came. Yeah, I like your optimism. Let's hope you're right that this thing disappears as quickly as it came. I mean, who knows about that? I mean, there seem to be various different sort of models of scenarios from that. That from you know, Trump's probably the most optimistic man on the planet right now. We're going to, say America's going to be open. Usual by, it's yeah. going to be by by Easter. What is by it? April the nineteenth. And I, I don't yeah. know what he's basing that on, but I don't no. think anybody else on the planet seems to share that no, view. I think, I think that's too optimistic. I think that's <laughs> yeah. too optimistic. Yeah, yeah, but um, but I think yeah, you're right. I mean, the thing is that the, I like what you're saying. There's a mix between um, planning, luck, and 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 uh, having strong business. And you're right, there is a degree of luck. I mean, if you happen to be selling dog food or dog supplements, then you yeah. know, you happen to make the right call. Who knew that two months ago? So that is exactly. just luck. But okay, I would have um, up on sanitizers if I knew this. I would have uh, I would have bought ten thousand. I, I guess you could have done, but you might have, you might have been in that unfortunate position of the the guy that I've heard about in I think in Washington State. I was speaking to my um, friend Jason Miles, who I'm actually going to be starting a new podcast with. So we've been talking in some detail, and he said that some guy went round did a retail arbitrage thing, basically bought literally thousands of hand sanitizers, and then yeah. tried to sell them on Amazon for an inflated price, and actually was then eventually told to give them away or face a jail oh, time. Yes. Actually, so you may have actually escaped yeah, quite actually, a fate there by not yeah. doing. That. <laughs> okay so um that's an interesting take i mean i think we've covered uh, working capital in in some detail um just yeah. any other thoughts that you want to leave us with in terms of managing cash flow generally in this challenging kind of time for e-commerce sellers what are your takes on that um my take is probably not to make any impulse decisions um you know it's always better to ride out the storm than to kind of make rash and things that you can't change later on down the line so i guess always make uh, rational and you know logical decisions rather than than impulse ones um you know we'll probably see this this thing will probably be around for the next few months so you know make the necessary changes that you do to your business in order to survive you know look for providers and, and partners out there that can help make things cheaper for you if not provide you with with additional cash flow and just find some ways to kind of maybe shore up and consolidate things in your business that you might have had loose ends because um, you don't want any leakages uh, especially in a time like this that does make sense and by the way you floated the the idea of logistics partners past i mean how, how does that work are you guys in a position to connect people to logistical partners who have yeah, been challenged so, by fba because that does sound right now like one of the biggest challenges for everybody yeah so as i said we're very 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 on the ground in the kind of e-commerce market um we've got you know two offices in europe or three offices in europe and um we're very very tied in with lots of partners or be that vat logistics you know web interpretation so anything that an e-commerce seller needs to help manage their business and help make it more more efficient we have one if not two partners in that area which we can make direct introductions to um and help on that on that front as well okay outside, and outside the payments Excellent. And if people need to do that, how do they get, get hold of that? Because it strikes me that there's several people I've been speaking to this week, including some clients have been saying, how do I find alternative logistical uh, providers yeah. now that FBA is pretty much shutting down? Cool. I mean, if you've been in contact with them, they can go through you. You can make a direct introduction to me. I mean, at, um, they, at the end of the day, they would be coming to someone like me in the, in the kind of business development team. Um, so you could make a formal introduction um, and then we would pass them on to the uh, potential logistic partner um, as well as talk about 
you know, how they're managing their, their payments currently and, and going forward. Sounds great. And how do people get hold of you, Nathan? What's the best way if they want to explore either the payment side or working capital loan or possibly logistics partners? Yeah, the best way at the moment is uh, probably via email since we're all <laughs> working from home. Um, but my email address is Nathan, it's N-A-T-H-A-N-F-O, Foxtrot Oscar, at uh, payoneer.com, which is P-A-Y-O-N-E-E-R.com. Great, Nathan. Thank you very much for that. And, and I think that the um, the possibility of logistics right now sounds almost more. It's funny how um, whatever is scarce suddenly becomes valuable. Yeah, people's definitely. mental attention might <laughs> like, like right now. Paper, logistics, right? you can actually <laughs> yeah, like toilet paper. I guess the the equivalent for toilet uh, the equivalent for e-commerce sellers of toilet paper. I guess is logistical yeah. services. The ability to actually get a, um, something delivered to the end consumer. So that certainly sounds uh, quite sexy right now. Even though most of the time that's like you know everyone wants to do F and not bother yeah. with it suddenly logistical companies that are, in, are coming into their own and also potentially the working capital loans if if they are needing to you know manage their cash flow but other than that um thank you very much for coming on and uh, and sharing your thoughts and uh, give us an insight into how the working capital thing at uh, payoneer works so um good luck working from home looks like you're well set up there i think you guys seem seem quite quite uh comfortable with working from home yeah, so okay. i hope it all continues yeah, to work thanks for you. michael okay and uh thanks very much for coming on the show cheers guys and take care to all you know be safe and uh i guess stay at home for now <laughs> thanks <Nathan. laughs> cheers. Bye.